Okay, so I'm back. Part two. If you have not watched part one, then go ahead and watch part one and come back. So I'm going to pick up where I left off. This is going to be a pretty short video because I am actually working, but I know that I have been needing to record this message. And so I don't want to keep you all waiting. So I'm going to kind of um, do like a probably a short 10, 10 minute video to kind of bring you up to speed. Um, God willing, I will post part three this evening. So um, to pick up where I left off, I went into 2022 and a correction. I believe um, in my previous video, I said that I did the fast, the Daniel fast in January 2021. I meant January 2022. So we ended um, 2021, me thinking that I was going to get married because of all the prophetic words, right? And so um, I was fasting so much because, you know, we were supposed to fast to bring this word to pass. So I was constantly fasting and praying. And so went into 2022, um, the church was going on a corporate fast together the first week. And then they went into the Daniel fast. I said, Lord, I'm not doing it. And so then I got kind of convinced <laughs> into doing it. And I thought, well, I'm going to go ahead and do the Daniel fast so that the Lord can't use it against me and say, well, if you would have done the Daniel fast, then, you know, the word would have come to pass. Again, that was ignorant thinking on my behalf. But again, this is all my journey. Um, and hopefully you all can just really find comfort in sharing and knowing that you're not alone and some things that don't make sense you'll receive clarification and know what to take to the lord and just kind of how to proceed so i did the daniel fast 21 days um i was on the daniel fast on my birthday so let's uh, fast forward so um okay let me go back a little the lord did place it on my heart to write a book i knew that um God had a purpose for me and he wanted me to get a word out. I didn't really know what word and how. And so he laid it on my heart to write a book. So in December, that's when I had the meeting. Again, this is all in my book. So I'm just going to jump forward that I submitted my um, partial manuscript on, it was Martin Luther King Day. So I think that was January the 16th. So around that morning, I submitted my a manuscript because I needed to see if I was approved to um, work with this publishing company. And so I submitted my um, partial manuscript, about four chapters, um, that morning. Um, all during, let's, so let's see, the 16th, that probably was day 12 or 13. I'm trying to think. I probably was about two weeks in by that time on the Daniel Fast. And I mean, I'm reading the book of Daniel and I'm receiving, receiving so much clarity, um, especially with understanding that sometimes we pray and we want immediate answers. And when we don't receive the immediate answers, we think that God doesn't hear us or he's upset or he's not answering our prayers. But we have to understand when we send those prayers up, it's a whole war going on. You know, it's the the the. The even one is trying to snatch those 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 prayers and the answer so that you will stay weary, so that you will um, grow troublesome, so that you will be the cause of your own demise. And so we have to understand when we read in Daniel, and I feel so bad that I don't have the scriptures. I'm just really going off of memory. But if I'm not mistaken, it talks about this in Daniel 10. Um, but the angel Gabriel came to Daniel and told him, the Lord heard your cry. The Lord heard your um, petition the first time. He heard your supplication the first time. He heard your prayer. But when it went up, it said, Gabriel, let's see, Michael was fighting against the prince of Persia. So it took 21 days for the answer to come back down because then you wanted the interpretation to a, a vision that he had that's about the end times. And so when he prayed, he was fasting. He was eating, um, you know, certain um, foods, so only fruits and vegetables um, because he needed an answer. He wanted to know what does this mean? And that's kind of like us with these dreams or 
these words we're receiving, we're like, God, what does this mean? And it seems like God doesn't hear us because we're waiting on the answer, but we have to understand it's a whole battle that's going on. And that answer, sometimes it has to go through some things to get to you. And so that gave me so much peace that, wow, okay. And as I was reading, I believed I was receiving so much clarification of what's going on. So ironically, um, the same day I submitted my manuscript that morning, I heard from the person that um, I believed was my kingdom spouse or my God-ordained spouse that same day. So I heard from him that evening. And I thought, wow. The same day I was obedient and sent in because I kept delaying sending in my manuscript. I mean, it had been, I suppose I submitted it like kind of immediately and it took me a month to submit it because um, I had to write it. And so just reading that it just gave me comfort in knowing that God heard me. So I sent that manuscript that morning. The person I thought was my kingdom spouse, he reached out to me that evening so he sent me a simple hey so this was on a different number um i didn't know who it was for sure but i had a feeling it was him don't ask me how i had a feeling it was him and so he told me it was him um i'm like oh, okay so i didn't i wasn't excited i was kind of taken back because okay last time i talked to you was september 2021 and so then here you go, popping up um, in January with a hey. So, you know, we ch chatted for a few. And then, you know, eventually I'm like, okay, well, this is this is God bringing him back. So who am I to hold a grudge? So, you know, I informed him that my birthday is coming up. We kind of called up on everything. He said he had been out the country. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to even be upset i'm just going to accept what he's telling me that is the truth right because if this is the person that god has for me then i have to trust them so i went i moved forward um with what he told me and we plan to see each other on my birthday um so fast forward this is not supposed to really be a recap <laughs> so i'm gonna have to jump forward but long story short on my birthday, which was the following week on January 20th, we planned to see each other. And I told him like, hey, I'm on the Daniel fast, so can't really go out to eat. If we do, it has to, you know, make sure it doesn't have like like flour or meats and just pretty much fruits and vegetables. Can't have a birthday cake because it, you know, even the ones that are gluten free um, has dairy. So I was so limited. I said, it was okay, you know, we'll, you know, find something to do. So I'm like, cool. So we were talking up until, you know, my birthday. So my birthday came. I'm like, wow, haven't heard from him. I'm like, okay, he's busy, so I'm going to see him later. So it's cool. Afternoon came. I'm like, wow. So I decided to reach out. No response. All right. Two o'clock hit. No response. Three. No response. Reached out. No response. Now it's the evening time. Five o'clock. Six o'clock. Seven o'clock. I call him and I get an operator that the person you're reaching is unavailable or not accepting calls at this time. I'm thinking, no way he blocked me. No way. There must have been an emergency. So um, on my birthday, we did not see each other. So the next day, I just knew I would have a message, a phone call, him apologizing. Because again, he just came back in my life after not hearing from him for four months. So I knew that he would um have a valid reason for standing me up on my birthday so um next day hit still didn't hear from him see him messages nothing and so i thought hmm let me try to contact him on a different number so you know i was hopeful that the call didn't go through right because i didn't even think that he was doing something foul but sure enough, the call went through. And so in that moment, I realized he blocked me. So I was pretty upset, but not as bad as I was that first time when he went ghost. Because this time around, like I have a relationship with God. You know, during the times that I was not talking to him, I just, I mean, I just read my word day and night, pretty much all day, just meditating on his on the word throughout the day and it became seriously 
um, my it was my daily bread. Like I, I, I needed it to get through. I look forward to it. And I just developed this amazing relationship with God. So even though it hurt, it did not take me out like it could have or how it had previously done. So I was pretty disappointed, but I'm like, okay, moving forward. So I'm like, okay, I didn't get it right. So I know, you know, God would not have allowed this to happen to me. So this must not be the person. So fast forward, I end up reading scriptures, specifically the book of Philemon, and go read that and you will understand kind of my thought process. It's only one chapter. Um, It kind of had me believing that, again, even though it it was kind of a painful process and not an ideal process of him coming back and then leaving, that somehow I believed that this was God, right? It was all for a plan. It was all for a purpose, that God needed to do some work in him, and so he had to remove us and... He was developing me in the process, in the way he was doing it. Like, I just had this whole um, justification, you know, based on, you know, what I was, the deception I was under, which at the time I didn't know. But looking at the videos and seeing that, oh, everybody's kingdom spouse is gone. God stripped everyone and separated them from their kingdom spouse. So I'm thinking, oh, okay. Sounds, sounds right. And so... um then I got scripture to back it up. So I'm reading scripture and I'm like, well, clearly this is the revelation God gave me to give me comfort to know that he got it. So I'm like, okay. So at this point I had kind of told my mom about it. So then I'm like, damn, I told her he stood me up. So now if I say that this is still my husband, she's going to think I'm crazy. So I just told her like, Hey, this is the situation, you know, God confirm it. We're not going to talk about it anymore, you know? And so I just really didn't talk about it. So here we are. That happened in January 2023. I'm sorry, 2022. I got approved a couple of days later um, for my book. So the contract to write my book, Girl Meets Kingdom, which tells this entire story. Um, and so then from there, I didn't hear from him. And it just turned into me just seeking God. And I was seeking God to the point to where I just completely surrendered um, the promise, the person. Um, I didn't date or anything. I just got so enamored by God. It's like that was enough. Like I I didn't even care anymore. Um, You know, it, it was like how Abraham was willing to sacrifice Isaac. He trusted God so much. He knew that that was the promised child. So if I, um, you know, sacrifice him, if he dies, then somehow you're going to either raise him up again or you're going to be God and perform the supernatural to make sure your promise comes to pass. So that's how I felt. I'm like, God, this is who you said is my husband. Um, I'm not really understanding what's going on, but I trust you. And so I'm just going to give it back to you. So I gave it completely to God. Um, I wasn't thinking about it constantly. Every once in a while, I would think about it. Um, I pretty much stopped watching the YouTube videos because every now and then I would, or I was watching, still watching one person. And that kind of still gave me hope um, because I'm like, well, everyone else is separated for their kingdom selves. We all are. So at some point, God is going to do a mass union of us all joining back together. And so I just felt comfort and peace. And... I was in my purpose, um, started a life group, um, developed a really um, kingdom friendship with a, a girl from a previous life group, um, just was in purpose, not worrying about me and not worried about marriage. I was just worried about my father's business. Um, I, I mean, that was my entire life was um, just, what do you want me to do, Lord? I want to know more about you, um, reading on my word purpose telling people about God and it was so satisfying I was so fulfilled um so for months I mean it really didn't even bother me I was never um waiting for a call or text I completely trusted God um and so fast forward um as the end of the year was approaching you know I did start to grow weary because I'm like all right it didn't happen I didn't get married in 2021 so surely I'm getting married in 2022 surely I'm about to get married Um, So that's kind of when I start back looking at the YouTube videos because 
it's like a whole community of us kind of in this waiting phase waiting to be reunited or united with the person god has for us and so i'm looking i'm like okay well we all still single so it's you know it's, it's okay but of course there were those messages saying by the end of the year have faith so again i start activating my faith and thinking by the end of 2022 i'm definitely getting married definitely getting married and so i kept waiting because i'm like okay it's been definitely more than four months that i have talked to him so i just knew something's about to happen before the end of 2022 and then of course you got oh this is the year of the bride all of this type of stuff so i'm thinking this is this is this is my year i'm gonna have faith end of 2020 end of 2022 comes um, and nothing happens. And so all I'm thinking is now I'm about to go into another birthday single. Um, and I had like a slight little fallback in August because one of the guys from my past, he somehow crept back into my life and I did see him. But then I'm like, I'm not about to delay my promise. I'm not about to mess up what god has for me so i quickly stopped talking to him so that only lasted probably about a week or two um and i'm like nope nope that was just a test i thought it was a test from the you know i, I thought it was a test from god or a temptation from the enemy to see if i was willing to since i was waiting so long for who i thought was my husband and this guy being the guy that i initially was so like into that i had to pray god to remove him from my life that's in my book too him coming alone and then this time it seemed like he actually won a relationship i'm like this is definitely a test i said but i refuse i refuse to mess up my promise and again i'm only desiring this promise because i'm i'm feeling like this is from god if i didn't feel like this had anything to do with god i would have been left i would have been left and so again i you know, in the 2022 comes and I'm like, wow, I'm still single. So around the end, probably the last quarter, probably around started in September, October, I start having these dreams about, I'm going to say his name Smith because just between me and you, that is not even his real name. You'll hear that in one of these parts. So I start having these dreams about Smith right my so-called kingdom husband and the dreams now i've never been one to say oh i'm a dreamer i have dreams i rarely remember my dreams but i started having these dreams that he was married and i was having other dreams too about like people like oh you'll never see him again oh this different stuff and i'm like these dreams are from the enemy they're just trying to like throw me off but i kept having these dreams but the, the dreams start becoming um, more severe. Because I was having dreams that he was married, right? And it, and I don't remember a lot of dreams, but I would remember this dream. And I had the dream that he was married, and I was pretty confused because I'm like, okay, clearly this can't mean what I think it means. This can't be literal. And so I kind of talked to some of my friends that are so-called prophetic. And maybe I shouldn't say that. Forgive me. But everything is questionable to me now, to be honest. Just not saying that people don't have that gift, but it's just certain things that now that I know what I know, I'm going back and using discernment and realizing that a lot of, a lot of people were not what they say they are, are, are not what they say they are. So... Um, I talked to a, a girl that I knew, and she told me, um, I asked her, like, hey, you know, what does this mean? And I keep receiving these dreams. And so she was, like, going to interse uh, intercession for him. So then I just kind of started looking up stuff, of course, on YouTube. And, then, you know, I was coming across the videos how that can mean that they were a witch, a false prophet, or a spirit spouse. And the videos was just kind of spot on. I'm like, that's definitely what's going on. Even though at that point, I had no knowledge that he was involved with anyone. And so I started looking um, into those videos. I was praying. And I'm like, I'm still having these dreams. I kept having those dreams. And they were vivid. 
and they were all dreams of him being married and me finding out and then uh, it's just I mean they were so vivid and I'll discuss it more um because this isn't part isn't in my book but I just kept having these dreams and so you know what those dreams really so they were not as often in at the end of 2022 but come the beginning of the year I was having them extremely often so it got to a point where I'm like I'm praying and I'm still having these dreams so what what do I do and so I was talking to one of my um, like one of the ladies I know and she was like you know it could be a warning that you need to tell them I'm like well we're not in communications I don't know what his number is so I you know tried to reach out to him on one of those uh, fake numbers that you can get through the app and you know I told him like hey you know you don't have to respond but just want to give you heads up on the dream because I'm thinking he involved with which and then again these YouTube prophetic pages were saying the same thing hey he's with a witch She's not you. And I know y'all can relate because I know y'all see the same videos I see. He's wishing it was you. He can't get out of it. So I'm thinking at this point, somebody got my man. Or he didn't got with a doggone witch, a Delilah or a Leah or somebody, then a Jezebel because they talking about he's with a Jezebel. They didn't got hold of my husband. So that's what I'm thinking. So I'm like, okay. All right. So I sent him the message. Of course, don't know if the message went through didn't hear from him but lo and behold what happens about a week and a half later so now we are in february and mr smith aka my so-called kingdom spouse reached out to me and i'm thinking wow but i have to tell you all what also transpired right before he reached out to me because other than the dreams, I start, excuse me, I start becoming extremely weary. I don't think I had ever become that weary. Because at this point, we're in 2023, and I'm like, I'm not, I said, like, I'm not waiting another year. I'm like, I have been seriously, feel, I, I feel like I have to be perfect before this comes to pass. I feel like I'm at my capacity of what I can do alone, on my own. I'm like, I need a, a person to help me do the things that you want me to do. I feel like I have reached where Crystal can go. And I'm now ready to be with my partner to reach more. And so I start going weary. I start about to get on a dating site. I was like, Lord, I'm just, I've, I've done all I can. I've done all I can. I mean, I was crying out. You know, it's good to have good godly friends in your life because my friends were definitely trying to talk me off a cliff. Not literally, but like trying to go back into the dating life, you know, giving up on the promise. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm about to just go out there and just find, you know what I'm saying, someone that's, you know, appears to be God-fearing. And so, and I even activated my dating site and my dating profile and honestly, I got on there and I was so doggone nervous. I was shaking because I felt like I knew I wasn't supposed to be on there. I felt the conviction. And I'm like, I'm about to do it because, God, you, you ain't gave me a husband. I've been faithful and loyal to this promise. Uh, how long am I supposed to wait on you, Lord? Five years? I know women, 10, 20 years. I mean, they've been waiting. So what, am I going to be them? Is that going to be me? And so I just started becoming like, maybe this was all just a lie. Like, maybe somehow I just thought, and it's just not right. Maybe you don't choose spouses or lead people to their spouse or their purpose partner. So, I got extremely weary. And so, I got on the dating site, and I just felt the conviction that I wasn't supposed to be on there. And I remember, like, again, I don't want to say hearing God, but it was laid on my spirit. Like, yeah, how does it feel being out of the will of God or out from under the protection of God? Something like that. And it was just me trying to choose who do I think is a godly man when I don't know who. All I can go by is their profile, bio, if they look like they decent, and what they tell me. I don't know their heart. Only God knows their heart. So for me to sit here and have to blindly choose, this is a good man of God. When he can show you that for six months and then next thing you know, he's a man from hell. That scared the living daylights out of me. I said, God, I can't do this. God, I can't do this. I, I have to trust you. I have to trust you. Because when you depend on yourself, you can get it wrong. 
That's why we have to involve God. And people say, you know, we got free will. Yes, we have free will, but we have to understand when you have women, when you have men that say, I don't care. I give up my free will for your will, God. Why does the scripture say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? I want your will. Yes, I could just live out my will. But I don't want to. I don't want to live a bare minimum life. I want to live a fruitful, abundant life. And that's only when we surrender and we ask that your will be done. That means we don't care what we want. We want what you want. So when people say, oh, you know, he has free will. He's not going to choose you. Do you not know that God knows what you're going to do? He knows the end from the beginning. So do you really think he's going to put you with somebody, a man that he's no that he knows is not going to choose you or pair you with the man that he knows that you're going to reject. He knows that that's taken into account. He's not going to put you with somebody that's going to reject you. If you are saying that God placed you with this person and that person rejected you, God did not place you with that person. You place yourself with it. You place yourself with that person. And we have to stop blaming God for stuff that we done for where we fell short. Stop putting that on God because his word will not return to him void, right? So a lot of us, and I'm going to get to it, a lot of us, we got the promise, but we might got the wrong person. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to try to record part three tonight. Um, so again, so we're ending when I got weary. I saw I'm about to go on the dating site. I felt like I, I can't do this if I, I could get it wrong. But if I rely on God, he can't get it wrong. So I immediately got off the dating site. I was on it less than 24 hours. I wasted my wasted my $20, my 1999. And so I'm like, you know what? The little strength I have left, the little faith I have left, I give it to you. And then the next day, and I said, God, I need to see a powerful move of you. I said, I need to see a powerful move. Like, I cried out like David. It, and it, it was me seriously demanding. I'm like, God, I have to. I need to. I'm like, I do not have any more strength. I cannot hold on anymore. I am walking away from the promise, and I'm just going to do what I want to do. I need to see a powerful move of the Lord. I kept saying it. I need to see a powerful move of the Lord. I need to. And the next day, I heard from Smith, my kingdom spouse. Now, it's about to be a whole turn of events. So, stay tuned. Whew. Make sure you watch part one. If you want to get kind of up to speed, watch some of my previous videos. And if you want to know everything in detail, um, kind of leading up to the end of the year, get my book, Girl Meets Kingdom. You can get it at girlmeetskingdom.com. I will be back. Take care.